This video is a gentle introduction to the Polars Library. The video is taken from my online course, Data Analysis with Polars. If you're interested in learning more, check out the link below. This lecture is up and running with Polars. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to import Polars, read data from a CSV file into a data frame, and select rows and columns from a data frame. We'll start off by importing Polars. By convention, we import Polars as PL. Now, the next thing we're going to do is read from a CSV. So we're going to load data from our first CSV, the data set of Titanic passengers. The CSV is located in the data directory, one level up from this notebook. So we see here, we're going to call the CSV, CSV file, and it's one level up, and it's called titanic.csv. Now, similar to pandas, we can read this CSV with Polar's read CSV function, and then we're going to print out the first few rows with the dot head method. So in this line here, we read the CSV file, and then to reduce the number of rows printed, we're going to print it with df.head. This gives us the output that we see of a Polar's data frame. Now, there's a couple of things to note here. First of all, it starts off with the shape of the data frame, and because we've called head, we, this output has five rows and 12 columns. In bold here, we see the column names. Column names are always strings and they're always unique. The other thing Polars provides us with is this bit down here, which gives us an indication of the data type of each column. So I64 here is short for a 64-bit integer. Over here, we have a string column. And over here with age, we have a floating point 64-bit column. Now, each row in the Titanic dataset has details about a passenger in the Titanic, along with the binary value in the survived column to show if they survived, where it's one, or if they died, in which case it's zero. Now the code above to load and read the CSV looks quite similar to pandas. However, over here we can see the first big difference with pandas. Polars does not use an index. So we've seen that Polars is much faster than pandas, so the lack of an index in Polars isn't a performance disadvantage. We'll also see that Polars code is a lot easier to read and write without an index. We basically save ourselves a lot of time setting index and resetting index and dealing with one of the indices that we have to deal with in pandas. Now we'll do some simple exercises where we select data from this data frame. And in this simple example, we're going to do it using square bracket indexing using an integer row number. Now I said Polars doesn't have an index. It does keep a form of index, which is an implicit integer index. And we can get the first row here, for example, by calling df square bracket zero and that prints out the details of the passenger in the first row. Notice that another difference in pandas is that you need to use the .loc or .iloc method to, to access rows. That doesn't exist in Polars. But we'll be learning a lot more about how you select data effectively in section two. Now in this case, we put an integer in, so Polars knew we were looking for a row, but we can also select a column in the same way with square brackets. If we put a string in here that's a valid column name, and print that out, which is the Polar's series. And this is what this looks like printed out. Again, it has a shape, and the series has a name, in this case, age, which it inherits from the column, and it's also got a D-type, which is a 64-bit floating type column. Every lesson will finish with some exercises for you, and the solutions are found at the bottom of the notebook. So that's it for this lecture. Make sure you check out the course at the link below, and subscribe to learn more about Polar's.